Hi everyone, so in today's video, we'll be going over how to create a network surface, really nice smooth form, then how to create a cool pavilion like this in Rhino. Then at the end, I'll show you how to subdivide it and create frames like this using Grasshopper, where we can take the subdivisions and or decrease it and do the same thing with the frames. So here we can increase the frame size and um, all of this I'll go over here and I'll also be sharing the script. So make sure to stay tuned uh, and let me know if you have any questions um, and let's jump right in. Okay, so today's video, uh, we're gonna start actually doing some modeling in Rhino. And I wanna share with you a tool that's really useful for creating like organic smooth forms in Rhino. And then that, that surface can be brought into Grasshopper to do uh, some subdivisions and things like that. So to start, let's go ahead and create an arc. So I'll do arc, and then I'll just do two points. So I'll do it this way, and just create an arc this way. Now I'll go ahead and just create a line going like this. And then I'll just copy that line from this point to this point. Now I'll take this one and I'll do a mirror and I'll select the midpoint as my mirror point. So here we have this, this, and this. This can already create a network surface, but what I'm going to do actually is rotate this to be standing up. So I'll actually just use this green arc here. I'll rotate it 90 degrees and I'll move it again from here to here. Now, the other way to do it is do rotate 3D and you will pick the axis. So the axis of rotation is going to be the hinge. So we'll create the first point, then the second point for the hinge. Then we're going to pick the reference point, which is going to be straight out because it's going to be the plane. We'll select that and then we'll rotate it up 90 degrees. So that's a, that's the way that I like to do it typically is rotate 3D select the hinge uh, axis of rotation, pick the reference point, and then rotate it up 90 degrees. Uh, now what we can do is we can also uh, do something fun with this. So let's go ahead and type hit F10. And notice that we only have a, a straight line here. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and uh, go to an interpolated curve. And I'm just going to do something like this. And what I'm going to do is just copy this over to the other side. So I'll copy from here to here. And now actually we'll mirror it over again. So I'll do mirror and I'll pick the midpoint and quadrant for up that circle and mirror it over. So with this, we can already almost have a network surface, but we need to give it a height. So now what I'm going to do is go to align and I'm just going to pick from here to here. So when you do network surface, and also another neat thing is if you go here to network surface, it'll give you on the right hand side, if you have your little help uh, tab, it'll show you how to do it. So you have to select them in the right order to get that surface. Uh, so this is pretty useful also. So I'll go, I'll select these network surface and look at how smooth and cool that form is. So it's going to also, um, so it's gonna be super smooth. It's gonna be really easy to subdivide. And you also have some parameters here to make it loose or um, subdivide it for further. So I'll hit okay and show you that that's looking really cool. Now, if, you're, if your viewport is seeing something different than mine, it could be because here in the display, I'm not showing my surface ISO curves, but when I show those, they'll show up here. Um, so that's a really neat tool that you can use. Um, and then we can take these curves, but notice that when we move it, it doesn't update automatically. So that's another trick that I wanted to share with you, which is record history. So we'll take this curve and I'll actually do this. I'll do a interpolated curve using this one point here, one point here, and one point here. And now 
what I can do is take this control point line and just move it up and create an even further um, like level of smoothness to this form. So I'll select this. So they have to be separate too. You can't have this, these all joined together and then do network surface. So I'll select this and go to network surface and notice that now it has this hump here. So this is really useful for super smooth uh, organic forms. Um, but what, like I said, I want to show you how record history works with this. So when you do network surface before you hit OK to accept the result, you're actually going to go here to record history. So you click that button and you hit OK. Once you do that, what's neat is that now we can take this and if let's say we didn't want it to be here, we can move it further and now it's going to update live. Uh, earlier, I showed you that when you move it at the end, it doesn't really uh, do anything. But now with this, with record history on, I can pick this line. And if I don't like the location of it or I want it to be wider, then I can do that. Same here. I can take this. And if I don't like the way that looks, then it could do something like this. So um, there's different ways in which you could adjust this on the fly, but you do have to do record history. If you forget to do that, then you're kind of out of luck. Um, but as soon as you have this information, then you can kind of extract that information and recreate it. So now that we have this form, there's many things we could do with it. We can take it into Grasshopper or we could sub, uh, do some subdivisions here. Uh, typically, I will bring it into Grasshopper because for me, it's easier to do. For me, I'm just used to using the Grasshopper interface, but you can definitely uh, use this and do something like this. So I'll do a bounding box on a new layer and I'll select that entire oh, so let me see I'll select that entire surface and then I'll do contours so I'll say from here to here and so this could become like a wireframe structure that you if you wanted to design it you can just do pipes something like this and create some really cool, just interesting, uh, straightforward structures. So that's some of the things that you can do here in um, Rhino. But if you wanted to bring this into Grasshopper, we can do something else in there too. So let's go ahead and take this, delete it. And let's go ahead and take this and bring it into Grasshopper. So I'll go ahead and take this, or I'll go here and bring in a surface And I'll select this surface, right click on top of this component and go to set one surface. Once we have that brought into Grasshopper, we can go ahead and hide everything else just so we're looking at the red preview um, from Grasshopper. So uh, the quickest way to do this is gonna be to subdivide it. Um, we can subdivide it using a plugin called Lunchbox or there's another way to subdivide it using isotrim. Okay, so now that we have it here, let's bring in the isotrim component. And isotrim always comes in with divide domain squared. The segments go into the domain, and now we'll plug in the surface into the domain here and into the surface. And automatically, we're going to have a subdivision of U, 10, and V of 10. And so if you want to further subdivide it, you can say 15, and then we'll plug this into both, and we can further subdivide it into smaller amounts. Uh, what's cool about network surface is that it's actually, um, some of these contours are going to be very much based off of the contours that you see previewed inside of Rhino. So that's something really neat here that that we have here at the end. And if you want to create some frames, all you have to do is take these surfaces and scale them down. So I'll go to an area component first, giving us the center of each one of those. And then we'll go ahead and bring in a scale component. 
and we'll go ahead and scale all of these panels relative to the center of all of those panels. And so we'll go to geometry here. And so now we have the outer panels and inner panels. So let's see here. I'll disable the preview here. So here I'll get the Okay, so now that I have it here with the scale down and the isotrim, I went ahead and decreased the subdivisions to 10 just to uh, just in case it'll make it easier for us to do this first and then later we can come back and adjust this slider. Okay, so what we're going to want to get are all of these edges from the isotrim and all of the edges of the scale down uh, panel. So to do that, we'll get deconstruct BREP and we'll plug the surface into deconstruct BREP and then I'll hold down Alt, slide this over and also do the same thing for our scale down geometry. So before we plug in the next component, which is going to be loft, we're going to want to flatten the output of the edges or graft, I mean. And by grafting it, we're gonna make sure that all of the information from these isotrams and from the scale down are going to be matching. And when we plug it into the loft, we will have our resulting panel. So here, we can take all of this information back here, middle click, disable preview. And now we have our, so I'll disable preview even on that or original surface. And now we have this really cool, smooth, paneled um, surface that we can pick here in the factor. We can say 0.1, and then you could do less than 0.9. And when you're scaling, you're going to want to go from 0.1 to 0.9 if you're trying to scale down. And if you're trying to increase the scale, you're going to want from, point, from 1 and up. So I'll go here to factor to 0.1 making those really tiny and then increasing this to a cool frame like a 0.9 and then here being able to increase subdivisions obviously not going too crazy where it's crashing your computer um so <laughs> like right now it's making it laggy so i'll actually make this a maximum of 25 and just let be the maximum there so we don't go too crazy so here I'll go to 12 for now. And this is basically how you would go about creating that subdivided uh, surface from our original uh, network surface. So if you do have any questions or want to see something in particular, uh, let me know. I will have this in the description for you to check out. Thank you for watching Deco Graphic Studio. Make sure to check the links below for the script that I made in this video. And if you want to learn more Rhino and Grasshopper, I have a Skillshare and Udemy site where I have more content like this. So if you would like one-on-one -on -one tutoring, make sure to let me know. I have an email below. Uh, but thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you next time.